What do you want to discuss now? My favorite color? Colonel, the 6 a.m. flight was the first one off the base? Yes. There wasn't a flight that left seven hours earlier and landed at Andrews Air Force Base at 2 a.m.? Lieutenant, I think we've covered this, haven't we? Your Honor, these are the Tower Chief's logs for both Guantanamo Bay and Andrews Air Force Base. Guantanamo log lists no flight that left at 11 p.m. and the Andrews log lists no flight that landed at 2 a.m. I'd like to admit them as defense exhibits Alpha and Bravo. I don't understand. You're admitting evidence of a flight that never existed. Oh, we believe it did, sir. Defense will be calling Airman Cecil O'Malley and Airman Anthony Rodriguez. They were working the ground crew at Andrews at 2 a.m. on the 7th. Your Honor, these men weren't on the list. Rebuttal witnesses, Your Honor, are called specifically to refute testimony offered under direct examination. I'll allow the witnesses. This is ridiculous. Colonel, a moment ago, check the tower logs, for Christ's sake. Well, we'll get to the airman in just a minute, sir. A moment ago, you said that you ordered Lieutenant Kendrick to tell his men that Santiago wasn't to be touched. That's right. And Lieutenant Kendrick was clear on what you wanted? Crystal. Any chance Lieutenant Kendrick ignored the order? Ignored the order? Any chance he forgot about it? No. Any chance Lieutenant Kendrick left your office and said, the old man is wrong? No. When Lieutenant Kendrick spoke to the platoon and ordered them not to touch Santiago, any chance they ignored him? You ever served in an infantry unit, son? No, sir. Ever served in a forward area? No, sir. Ever put your life in another man's hands? Asked him to put his life in yours? No, sir. We follow orders, son. We follow orders or people die. It's that simple. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Are we clear? Crystal. Colonel, I have just one more question before I call Airman O'Malley and Airman Rodriguez. If you gave an order that Santiago wasn't to be touched, and your orders are always followed, then why would Santiago be in danger? Why would it be necessary to transfer him off the base? Santiago was a substandard Marine. He was being transferred. That's not what you said. You said he was being transferred because he was in grave danger. That's correct. You right. said he was in danger. I said grave danger. You said, is there I any recall other... what I, I said. I can have the court reporter read back to you. I know what I said. I don't have to have it read back to me like I'm... Why the two orders? Colonel? Sometimes men take matters into their own hands. No, sir. You made it clear just a moment ago that your men never take matters in their own hands. Your men follow orders or people die. So Santiago shouldn't have been in any danger at all, should he have, Colonel? You snotty little bastard. Your Honor, I'd like to ask for a recess. I'd like an answer to the question, Judge. The court will wait for an answer. If Lieutenant Kendrick gave an order that Santiago wasn't to be touched, then why did he have to be transferred? Colonel? Lieutenant Kendrick ordered the code red, didn't he? Because that's what you told Lieutenant Kendrick to do. Object! And when it went bad, you cut cursed. these guys loose! Your Honor, you had marked us inside a bony transfer. Your Honor, you doctored the logbook. Damn it, Captain! You coerced the doctor. Consider Not yourself in contempt. contempt. Colonel Jessup, did you order the code red? You don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled to You them. want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. Who's going to do it? You? You, Lieutenant Weinberg? I have a greater responsibility than you can possibly fathom. You weep for Santiago, and you curse the Marines. You have that luxury. You have the luxury of not knowing what I know, that Santiago's death, while tragic, probably saved lives, and my existence, while grotesque and incomprehensible to you, saves lives. You don't want the truth because deep down in places you don't talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. We use words like honor, code, loyalty. We use these words as the backbone of a life spent defending something. You use them as a punchline. 
I have neither the time nor the inclination to explain myself to a man who rises and sleeps under the blanket of the very freedom that I provide and then questions the manner in which I provide it. I would rather you just said thank you and went on your way. Otherwise, I suggest you pick up a weapon and stand a post. Either way, I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. Did you order the code red? I did the job. Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did! Please, the court, I suggest the members be dismissed so that we can move to an immediate Article 39A session. The witness has rights. Captain Ross. Jack? The members of the court will retire to an anteroom until further instructed. All rise. What the hell is this? Colonel, what's going on? I did my job, I do it again. I'm gonna get on a plane and go on back to my base. You're not going anywhere, Colonel. MPs, guard the Colonel. Yes, sir. Captain Ross. What the hell is this? Colonel Jessup, you have the right to remain silent. Any statement. I'm being made, charged with a crime. A trial by court martial. Is that what this is? Or administrative. I'm being charged with a crime. Right to consult with a lawyer prior to any further questioning. This is funny. This lawyer may be a civilian That's what lawyer appointed by you at this your is... own expense. I'm gonna rip the eyes out of your head and piss at your dead skull. You fucked with the wrong marine. Colonel Jessup, do you understand these rights as I've just read them to you? 